YouTube. I'm finally back with a new video. I've missed this so much. It's been so long. Um, and today I'm going to show you all how to use the RAM editor to edit your Animal Crossing New Leaf Town. Um, which is, I am on the homepage right now of the RAM editor, um, which I have so kindly linked to in the description box. Um, as for the requirements um, that you need, they are right down here on the RAM editor's site. Uh, but the one you really want to focus on is this right here. You need an old Nintendo 3DS, 3DS XL, or 2DS with the firmware version 9 up to 9.5.0-22, um, so 9.5.0-23 or higher are not supported. Um, so as long as your firmware version starts with a 9 and is under 9.5.0-23, you're set. Anything above that, it will not work. The developers have not said that they are going to make a version that will work with that, so just sit tight for a little bit. Okay, so let's get down to business. This is the RAM editor's home screen, um, and as you can see, you need to upload a file for it to edit. And the way you get this file to edit is down here. It is the first six steps, I believe. Yes, the first six steps of this process right here. Um, you need to you know, just run Animal Crossing New Leaf in your console and get in-game, um, so just load your mare making sure you can already move. Then just simply press the home button, scan this QR code right here, or you can just go to the internet browser and type in this URL. Then wait a few seconds, it will show a solid green screen, it will crash and show an error screen, which is fine, that's what you want, um, and go back to the home menu. And then you can go back to your game and save, then power down and take out the SD card and put it in your computer. And people call this process dumping your save file. I promise it's not too scary once you do it once or twice. It just creates a save file of your game called acnlram.bin on your SD card. Uh, so once you get done with that process, um, you put your SD card in your computer and open it up. <coughs> so that is right here for me. This is the file that that process created. Now you need to make a copy of your save file um, so that you can restore it in case there is a mistake. So I just do that by dragging and dropping it on the desktop. You can save it to a certain place on your computer if you want, but my desktop is the best place for me to put it. So now once that's done, you can go up here, you choose the file you want to upload, and you want to upload the file that is from your SD card. Um, you don't want to upload the backup file you created because you need that just in case you need to restore your game. So click on acnlram.bin and open it. Once you upload it, this is the screen you come to. There are five different pages you can see up here, five different pages that you can um, use with the RAM editor, um, and I'm going to go through them all. So first we'll just start out on this map page that you first come to. Um, it shows the layout of your town and everything in it. Here you can both delete and place items in your town. It looks really confusing and weird at first, um, but once you get used to it, I promise you will see your town in all these crazy colorful squares. Uh, each colored square stands for a different type of item. Very quickly, the main ones are uh, black means a rock, bright green means a tree, tree stump, bush, bamboo, or furniture item for some reason. Bright green with an X is anything buried under the ground. Dark green are weeds. Pink are flowers. Yellow are bells. Blue is clothing. Gray um, is any sort of pattern or design that you've put onto the ground. And question marks are anything in wrapping paper. Now, unfortunately, um, it doesn't show you where buildings and public works projects are. They're just blank spaces to this map. So it can help to outline your buildings and public works projects with patterns or flowers. I just have so much stuff in my town that I can basically tell where buildings and uh, public works projects are without purposefully outlining them. Now, up here is the search bar where you can search for any item, you type in something and all the results come up. Um, and here is this drop down menu which is just a massive <laughs> list of anything and everything that you can possibly place into your town. And this black bar up here 
shows the coordinates and the item of whatever box your cursor is currently on. So this box is the coordinates 8720 and there are white tulips in that box. So to delete an item that's in your town, you keep the drop down menu on just this top dash and you click on whatever box you want to delete. So there was something there and now it's gone. It's like here, there are white lilies. I click and now there are no more white lilies. And to place an item, you can either search for it up here or select it from the drop down menu. So say you want to place some bamboo, I would just simply type bamboo into the search bar. And as you can see, there are lots of different types of bamboo um, that it brings up. Um, but I just want regular old bamboo, so I'll select that. And then you can just place it wherever you want. You can put some here, you can put some here, you can put some here. You can put bamboo all over the place. This list is very extensive. Um, you can even put the different types of special, special tree stumps. has the whole list right here. And all nature can be placed almost anywhere, including in rivers, on cliffs, and on the stone plazas. Um, you can even put regular trees and bushes on the beach where they normally can't go. The only restriction you still have um, is that nature can't go directly by buildings or public works projects. There still needs to be a space in between, but you can place bushes and trees and bamboo in lines right next to each other. There's no limit on how much nature can go in a line anymore. And like I said, the list is pretty extensive. The items you can place are pretty much unlimited. You can place nature, bells, clothes, KK slider songs, furniture, DLCs, street pass items, pretty much anything and everything. Also on this page down at the bottom, um, you can choose to fill your entire town with a certain item. Whatever item is selected, is it will just fill all of the spaces with it. You can fill your entire town with roses if you want. Um, you can remove every item from your town. You can remove all your weeds and you can water all your flowers. Next up up here is the dressers page. This page shows all your characters with their storages, including their pockets, their dressers, and their island boxes. Um, you can place items into your character storages the same way you'd place items in your town on the map page. Um, just be sure if you want to put nature items in your storage that you get the sapling, like the small version of it that you can put into your pockets. Um, so if you want red tulips in your storage, you will need to put a red tulip bag, not red tulips or red tulips wilted. You need the red tulip bag. And if you want to put a blue hydrangea in your pockets, you need to do the blue hydrangea start, not the blue hydrangea bush and so on and so forth. Also on this page, you can change your character's tan levels um, and their face type here. Also down here, you can choose what badges, 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 you can choose what badges each of your characters have, and it shows what designs um, each of your characters has currently, but you can't alter them at all. Next up is the island page, and it is uh, just an island map. Um, with its items so you can edit your island basically the same way you'd edit your town. You can add regular trees and bushes that wouldn't normally be there, you know, whatever you want. You can place items, search, drop down, same deal. Next up is the villagers page. This is fairly straightforward. Um, it shows each of your villagers with their assigned numbers over here on the left. Um, those numbers will be more important on the buildings page if you want to move their houses around. Uh, but in these drop-down menus, you can change one villager to another. So say I want Apple instead of Eric. I would just click on Eric's drop-down menu, scroll until I find Apple. She is 160, so I click on Apple. And then it will ask me, um, do you want to reset the villager's data? I'd say okay, but if you say cancel, the new villager would have the same shirt and the same furniture as the original villager. This won't mess up anything important, but it's something to keep in mind. But I'm going to say okay. Now on to the buildings page. Uh, this is probably the page that trips the most people up because it involves coordinates and therefore some math. Um, it takes a couple times to fully grasp it, but it's not too bad once it clicks for you. So first of all, up at the top, you can change your town's native fruits. You can change the grass type, the town hall color, and the train station color. And it also shows all the designs you have on display at the Able Sisters, but like the other designs it shows, uh, you can't alter them in any way. Now on to the fun part. 
This is a list of all the buildings and public works projects you have and can move around in your town. Let's check out the little notes up here at the top first. Move mouse over the map tab and check real coordinates at the black box, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, moving certain buildings may damage the save game and moving custom standees slash signs may reset their pattern. Uh, the only things you really should not move are your train station and your railroad crossing arms, which are the first two right here. Um, doing so could uh, and probably will corrupt your save file. Anything else you can pretty much move anywhere. You still need one space between buildings and other buildings, but other than that, let your imagination roam. You can put buildings and public works projects in rivers and on the beach, and a lot of fun town designs can come from that, obviously. So as you can see here, each building has an X and Y coordinate assigned to it that you can change. Um, I'll touch on the villagers first. Like I said, on the villagers page, each villager has a number assigned to it which corresponds to the villagers on the buildings page. See, it says villager 1 house, villager 3 house, it doesn't say the actual names. So you have to know the number of the villager from this list in order to change the place on the buildings list. So Julian here is listed as number one, so villager one house here is Julian's house. Now there are two ways you can go about moving buildings. The first way begins with knowing the exact spot you want your building to go. Um, it would be easiest to place an item on the ground in game where you want it. Um, I'd use bells or a clothing item because the colors of their boxes stand out, yellow and blue. Um, so the place you want to put the item is, bear with me, the space behind where you would stand if you were telling Isabel where to build a public works project. So for public works projects that are two spaces wide, you would place the item in the front left space for public works projects that are three spaces wide and also most buildings, uh, you would place the item on the front middle space. Then wherever you place the item is the coordinate you'd move um, that building to. So say in my town I placed some bells here to show where I want the flower arch to be. So in the black box up there, I can't move my cursor, but in the black box up there it shows the coordinates are 59.30. So since that's where I want it, I would go to the buildings page. I would find the flower arch right here. And I would put a 59 in the X box and a 30 in the Y box. So that's the first way that you can move things. Now say that you have your Zen garden here built, but you want it one space right and one space up. You can't place an item there because the Zen Garden is already in the way, but since you only want it moved a couple of spaces, it's fairly simple. Just like geometry class, changing the X coordinate moves horizontally and changing the Y coordinate moves vertically. So if you want to move the Zen Garden one space to the right, you would add one to its X coordinate, making it 77. Then if you want to move one space up, you would subtract one from its Y coordinate, making it 37. So adding to the X coordinate moves the building right, and subtracting from the X coordinate moves the building left. Adding to the Y coordinate moves the building down, and subtracting from the Y coordinate moves the building up. Working with these coordinates definitely takes getting used to. You might have to redo some moves a couple of times, but like I said, after a couple of tries, you'll be a pro. Now, after you've made all the edits you want, you need to save, which is this button right up here. Now, if your computer lets you, simply save it as a CNL RAM bin on your SD card, thus replacing the original um, file that was there. My Mac just downloads the file down here, um, so I have to manually open it up here, get the file, drag it to my SD card, go to my SD card, delete the old ACNL RAM dot bin, and then rename the new file to acnlram.bin so that the game will recognize that as the save file. So now the changes are in the save file on your SD card. 
um, but you still need to inject that save file into your game to actually make the changes appear. So I'll go ahead and eject my SD card. And the home page of the RAM editor shows you in steps 8 through 14 on down here, if it'll go. Da -da 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 -da. 8 through 14. This is how you inject the save file into your game. So you save the edit to town and replace the original file with it, which we did. And then you insert your SD card into your console, run Animal Crossing New Leaf and get in game, making sure you can already move your character. Press the home button, scan this QR code or go to the URL down here. Wait a few seconds, it will show a green screen, crash, show that error, and go back to the home menu. And return back to the game, go inside your home, then go back outside again, and your changes should be there. Now, anytime I inject a save file, I go inside my train station first. I've just heard that that's the safest place to inject a save file, but I am sure that it's that this process is safe if the RAM editor's creators tell you to do it. So basically, that is it. There aren't many risks, thankfully, to using uh, the RAM editor unless you move your train station like I told you not to. If you mess something up, you can always use the backup save file that you have here on your desktop and inject it like the process we just went over, and that will restore um, your original version of your game. Now, if you really mess it up and your game won't even load, fear not. You can hard reset your game by holding down X, Y, A, and B all at the same time while New Leaf is loading. Then just, you know, go through the process, create a new town, and once you have the control to free roam, inject your backup save file like we just discussed. Your original town will be there and everything will be fine. Now I will link to a little hacking guide I made that covers the basics of the three main ways to hack in New Leaf. It includes links to other um, helpful pages as well. That's down in the description box. So just let me know in the comments or on my Tumblr if you have any questions. I'll do my best to help. In the meantime, you all be kind to one another and don't forget to be awesome. Bye!